Uh, good morning. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here uh, at Strata, and I just found out the controversy about music science while I was backstage, by the way, which is a good time to, to find that out. Um, but uh, it's an honor to be here after a very successful conference uh, in New York a few months ago. Um, uh, as uh, Alistair mentioned, I'm Rishi, CEO and co-founder of Savan, India's music streaming service. And uh, I have about 10 minutes uh, to, um, to, uh, to talk to you guys about a billion people, and so I'm going to try to do that as best I can. Um, the objective today is to have us all kind of look up a little bit, uh, maybe look at data a little bit of a different way, maybe inspire some thought uh, and some thinking and, and have a little fun. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, three sort of core things. One is this concept of uh, visible or invisible data. Uh, two is how uh, our user base is really a proxy for a billion behaviors uh, and well beyond that as we look at different countries. Uh, and the third is a uh, thing that I call just uh, data ripple effects, which is that you harness data as a company to apply it to your own business, but uh, over some time you realize that you're actually able to apply it to a bunch of different other industries and it's sort of happening across the board. You saw sort of uh, some mentions of it earlier today. Um, I do want to credit one thing, which is uh, um, in 2011 when we launched our music app, we uh, were introduced to a gentleman named DJ Patel, who needs, uh, I think, no introduction in this room. Uh, DJ's gone on to become a good friend of ours and uh, a dear advisor to the company. But in 2011, when we built our first music apps, uh, he said, he said, look, guys, uh, as soon as you launch a music app for, for India, which is this huge addressable market and uh, where music is sort of in the bone, uh, you're going to have a bunch of copycat companies that start that, so be a data company. Uh, and he was precisely right. So uh, today we are equal parts data and music. Uh, so I'm going to share a little bit of that uh, with you guys today. Um, let's start out with having a little fun. Um, and uh, let's not forget that data is, in fact, uh, fun. But what do the US Open and the French Open have to do uh, with big data? So um, I play tennis twice a week, and um, not as good as I should be. but. Um, a few weeks ago, a friend of mine said, uh, said to me, he said, you know, Rishi, I noticed that when we play on a clay court that you're able to return my serves just a lot better. And so I told him, I said, well, the difference is the surfaces. Um, a hard court on the left is what the U.S. Open is played on, and a, a clay court on the right is what um, the French Open is played on. And the difference is that um, the clay court you can see patterns. You can see patterns of where balls land uh, for service. You can see where someone stands and how they move behind the baseline. And what's interesting about that, um, and I want you to rem remember this slide because I'm going to apply it to music in a few minutes, but it's two nearly identical play experiences, but the one on the left is very, very data poor, and the one on the right is very, very data rich. Um, a similar thing, uh, just for fun. This was, again, around 2011. And there's all this talk about Barnes and Noble and Amazon and what Barnes and Noble was going to do to sort of counter Amazon. Obviously, that's gone on to change. But this is a real picture of the delivery cart in front of our office in New York. Um, and there's a lot of data sitting right there on that cart. Um, and it's sort of um, leading data for what then will lag in the capital markets. And you can look at market caps of the two companies. Actually, Barnes and Noble is less than a billion dollars. But uh, the point is that it's all around us, it's in our living rooms, it's on the streets uh, with taxis, it's, uh, it's everywhere, and it's up to us to obviously be able to observe it and, and do important things with it. Um, I mentioned that we are um, a music streaming service, and that has also made us a data streaming service. Um, hopefully you find some of what I'm saying interesting today, but if not, at least we get credit for bringing Kanye West to Strata and Hadoop for the first time, so we're pretty excited about that. But um, we are a uh, mobile-centric company, 95% mobile, which is very unique to the profile uh, of, of India, but also to, uh, to music companies and streaming companies in general. Usually they split different ways. The beauty of that is that through mobile, you get so much rich signal. You know, you get handset, you get carrier, you get location, not just a fixed IP, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we've harnessed all of that. Um, one of the most important things about us as a company is as we're streaming your favorite music, we're also taking data packets up and down. And um, the way that we look at it is we have a really high fidelity data pipeline, uh, and it's a real-time data pipeline. So as our user base grows, each one of those users is a beacon for us. Um, as the streaming time increases, the data points multiply, and we have a very, very rich data pipeline of which to do a lot of things with. Um, 
what's really important to note about us as a company, and this is a real phrase that we say in the company to eat data for breakfast, is that there's no department for data. It's not like there's a room with a bunch of people crunching data or it's something that's separated from the company. It's actually a big part of our culture. It's um, uh, how we sort of wake up. And the reason we say this is because we want people to wake up and look at numbers and find signals and find causation and find correlations and, uh, and really pay attention to uh, the numbers because uh, our scale produces uh, an incredible data set. Um, we, uh, we take machine learning and it's both applied internally uh, to our products and our algorithms and, and how we develop things, but it's also produced externally. So as an example, um, our central intelligence in the company is a system called Data One, which I'm just showing you an example of here. This is actually built for labels. It's called Label One, uh, named after Air Force One. and um, one of the beauties of this is that our OEM partners, our phone manufacturing partners, or our label partners, they don't have to be big data specialists. We can empower them with the big data that we have produced. And um, this is just one example of us being able to dip into absolutely any array that we want to uh, and glean incredible insights from it. Um, so I mentioned those tennis balls uh, before, which I'm going to get to in, in one second, but how are we a proxy for you know, a billion uh, different behaviors, um, we can literally look at the patterns of how people live, uh, how they eat, when and where they play, uh, what they're purchasing or inclined to purchase, um, and how they sleep. And all of that through a music streaming app. Um, and so how do we do that? So on the left is a local media file, and that is the hardcore example. And it leaves really no data footprint. I get a Coldplay CD, you don't know how many songs I skipped. You don't know that I listened to one song on repeat 45 times. You don't know that I listened to three tracks here and then changed it and put in a, a different CD. You don't know any of that. But in a streaming environment, you get real-time data patterns, like the clay court. And um, what you listen to in what sequence, time of day, um, it gives us a lot of rich signal. Um, so it would not be fair for me to just say that and not show it to you. Um, but let's look at three uh, territories, OK? So this is, this is India, and this is seven days of data. Uh, you can see how India behaves. Um, we sort of commute around 10 to 11, get a little bit of a late start over there. Um, lunch is around 2. Uh, it's a very clear dip around lunchtime. Um, and then it sort of carries on throughout the day. Uh, we can map this to genres. We can map this to anything. You can see how this can get applied to uh, ad sales and ad technology. Um, and you, know, you might think, OK, well, that's great. So that's how most countries would behave. But here's the US. And the US starts at 6 AM, builds until around 5 PM, and then begins to, to trail off. And of course, there's seasonality and changes that may, might happen there if you push content to people. Um, and then since we're in Singapore, we thought it would be nice to be able to, to sort of take a, a little look at the data that's, that's, that's showing up here. And you see distinct peaks at 7 AM and 7 PM. And this is week after week and week after week. Um, and again, because we are music streaming on mobile, um, it's really, it's just a real time, you know, data beacon to be able to pull information like this. So how do we use this? Um, and how does this sort of work kind of cross industry? Um, so big streaming data can be applied to anything. These are in fact the heat maps of the charts that, that you just saw. But what does it tell us? Um, we can look at how people travel um, and be able to uh, address uh, anybody who wants to generate transactions for them, be it uh, airlines or, or hotels. We can look at handsets. Um, we can look at our data and actually before quarterly reports show you which companies uh, handsets are taking over market share from someone else's. Uh, I won't use the names right now, but you can actually see the trends. Uh, same thing with carriers. We can find dead spots uh, around all over uh, India and in the markets that we play in. Uh, and of course, address people by day parts, gender, age, things like that. Um, I mentioned the last thing, which was data, rip, uh, data ripple effects. And I just want to take two minutes and talk about this, and then I'll close out. Um, so the idea here is that you do harness data for your own company, but then you eventually can apply it to many things. Take Sovin in the middle for a second. Um, we have enough data at scale now that we can actually predict box office open using our data as one signal, using number of screens as another signal. Uh, using the talent that's in there and their performance record as another signal. Uh, and that's not stuff that was contemplated uh, in the past. You take Uber or Grab Taxi or Ola Cabs in India, 
And um, look at the data that's created there. It's not just about uh, routes, but someone mentioned uh, driverless cars before. I think it was Roger. But if you look at dr um, what these companies do at scale, is there's going to be a lot of driverless car technology that's built from numerous companies. But the actual routes where a driverless shuttle is needed or where uh, you know, a metro system needs to be built or where infrastructure needs to be addressed um, can actually come from the data that's coming from all of these beacons that are on the street. Um, and the last is I'm using Flipkart as an example, which is India's e-commerce leader, um, equivalent of Amazon, um, if you will. And one of the interesting things that can happen here, and I'm not saying it is, uh, but um, it's a very, uh, India's a very cash-driven economy. It's not a credit-driven economy. Uh, now that's changing with net banking and e-wallets. But uh, in most economies, if you were going to get a mortgage or a lease on a car, you have to have this thing called a credit score. But now, for the first time, since there's a digital commercial footprint and fingerprint that's individualized to everybody from Flipkart, there's no reason that they can't translate that data set into what is essentially a credit score for individuals. Um, and I think this is, you know, you heard a little bit about it today, but I think you're going to see a lot more of uh, data harnessed in one environment being applied across the board. It's sort of the sharing of, of, of private and public, as we just mentioned up here. Um, and, uh, and with that, I want to thank, uh, where's my thank you slide? I want to thank you guys. That's the music science uh, uh, study that was done by Alistair. And I uh, hope you guys can check it out. And I uh, hope you learned a little bit about uh, what we do. And thanks, uh, thanks again for the time.